It's easy to follow along at mass when everybody's doing the right thing. If you went to a youth mass, and for some reason, some crazy youth leader tells you, no kneeling during the consecration, or no kneeling after Holy Communion, etc. Would you know when to kneel? Would you know what to do? So the first time that you change your posture to kneeling during the Mass is after the Holy, 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 or the Sanctus. So when you keep your ears open and you hear the words that said, Holy, 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 then you know after this prayer it's time for me to kneel down. Or if you hear the words Sanctus, Sanctus, and then they'll continue when this prayer is over, that's when we kneel down. Then we don't change our posture until we hear the words Amen or Amen, whether it be said as a word or whether it be chanted or sung. When the, you hear the word Amen or Amen, you stand back up. And then you do Our Father and the sign of peace. Now our posture will change once again at the Agnus Dei or the Lamb of God. So you keep your ears peeled when you hear the Lamb of God and you kind of hear it three times in succession. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Then what do we do? We kneel down. Again, why? Because we're about to receive Holy Communion. And this is the better disposition to be ready to receive our Lord. God is really, truly, substantially present there on the altars, waiting to be united with us. Wow, so intimate, so powerful. Wow, if I'm standing or if we have this habit of standing during this time, wow, that's bad for our disposition because we might say this, but it's so easily forgotten. It's so easy for us to be distracted. We have the priest facing us. We're looking at him. We can, it's very easiest for us to think that this is about the priest and what he's doing, but no, we got the eternal priest in the altar. We've got the eternal God. Wow, this is what we're really preparing ourselves for. So as a short review, again, we have the Sanctus or the Holy, Holy, Holy. That's when we kneel down for the first time. And then when we hear the words Amen or Amen, then you rise because we're going to do the Our Father and give a sign of peace to our neighbor. And then after that, you resume the posture of kneeling after the Agnus Dei or the uh, Lamb of God is being prayed by the priest and community. Then we're kneeling down again at that point. Now, I strongly encourage you, even if you're the only person kneeling, that when you choose, okay, I'm gonna do the right thing. If my knees are working, there's no reason for me not to kneel other than I don't wanna be embarrassed or I don't wanna be attention on me. No, my friend, your kneeling is drawing attention to God. We kneel when God is present, when God is in our midst, right? And that's what you're doing. You're glorifying God with your postures. Wow, this is going to be so great because maybe you'll be at a youth conference and somebody will say, you know, and you don't know who this person is. They'll say, hey, no kneeling. We're on, there's, there's no kneelers here. That's a little bit uncomfortable. We don't want you young people being uncomfortable because we want to be hip. We want to be cool. But don't you know that what we're all really thirsting for, what really gets us is not uh, you know, rock music, what really gets us, what our hearts are really yearning for is the presence of God. Give me God, right? And so when you make that powerful witness and you kneel down, people will be like, in their hearts, they'll know, they just need somebody to lead the way. And they'll follow your bold example. There is a study done, I've studied this in sociology, that they did an experiment where they had a person enter an office building waiting in line for a doctor, etc. And they pulled the fire alarm. And, but the thing is, everybody else was in on it except for the test subject. And what did the test subject do? He looks around. What is everybody else doing? Well, everybody else is acting like they don't hear anything. So what does the guy do? He stays there. Like, you know, the, the building could be burning, but he's not moving because nobody else is moving. But then they did it again, experiment another person. And then this time they, everybody went frantic out the door. Well, what did this person do? They got up and ran out the door. The same way, if we're bold, we're, if we take the initiative, if we know when to make our posture, we know when to do our gesture, and we do it with great confidence and great love, then what's going to happen is that the Holy Spirit will flow and everybody's going to follow you. Maybe not the first time, maybe not the second time, but I guarantee you, one by one, people's hearts will start to get the courage. God will allow grace to flow more thoroughly and you'll be glorifying God through your actions. All right. God bless you. God love you. Be bold. Jesus loves you. Let's show him that we love him back. I always hear the excuse, hey, God knows what's going on in my heart. I love Jesus right here. I don't have to, to do these gestures. Well, that's like saying, you know, I really love you, baby. 
You're so beautiful. You're my woman. I love you so much. I'm not going to act like it. Why do I need to act like it? I got it right here in my heart. No, how does somebody know that you love them? By the way you act. So let's make sure that we do the best we can to kneel, to stand, and to sit at the proper times. God bless you. God love you. Have a wonderful day.